Hello again, and welcome to part three of the 2020 platformer tutorial here on ToadNet. Um, this is a spline constrained platformer. And today we are going to oh, I'll open up my test level here. We are going to be setting up a double jump and a wall jump for our character here. Let's open up our character and get started. This one should be a little bit quicker video. We go into input. When we jump, we're going to do a couple things. So first thing we want to right click break link to our jump and move that away. Okay. So when we jump, we are going to get the mesh. We are going to from the mesh um, get world location. Okay. And then we are going to, from pressed, do a sphere trace by channel. Sphere trace by channel. Okay. Now, here, where we're going to have some fun. So we're going to get the world location of the mesh, but then we want to add some things to it. So we're going to have a radius. We're going to do a new variable. And we're going to have wall jump radius. And that'll be a float. And then we're going to have another one. And we're going to have jump step correction. Okay. And we're gonna get those and we're gonna make a new category for them. And we're gonna go jumping. And then we'll get, put our jumping variable in there as well. And we'll get our jump step correction variable in there as well. Perfect. Okay. So, to our world location, we want to add a vector. We're going to split those incoming pins though. And to our Z, we are going to add a wall jump radius and a jump step correction. And what these are is there's going to be a basically ball drawn at the character's feet. And that ball is going to tell us whether we're close enough to a wall to jump off of it. Right? Nice and simple. However, if we're going up a platform or going upstairs, we might trigger that ball when we're just walking upstairs and we try to jump on stairs. So this step correction is going to be an extra little bit of height so that the ball isn't drawn right at the tips of our toes, but just up a little bit, more like the ankles. So, and we're going to put that into our start location. And then into our end location, if we put the same thing in, we would never get anything. Okay, so if we just plug this in, we'll never get anything because those two values have to be different for sphere trace to work. We're just going to do a plus integer and plug it in. So it's just moving by one point. That's that's all it's doing. So we'll set that to one. One, I said. There we go. Um, in for our radius, we do want our radius. So I'm just going to move these up some like that. We'll grab all those and hit Q, beauty, and then we'll straighten off there, beauty. And we're going to get our wall jump radius into radius and then we are going to do a debug line for duration okay and we're gonna grab all this move it down a bit hit c for comment and we're gonna say, say trace for wall jumping okay Uh, 
And that trace is gonna give us a yes or no, because we're gonna do a branch. Straighten, and then we've got true or false. So yes or no, did we hit anything? Let's set our wall jump radius. I think, oh, compile and save so that we can set it. Wall jump radius, I'm gonna set to something like, um, oh, and I'm gonna skip the song. It might be a little bit too bassy there. Uh, wall jump radius, let's say 50. And then my jump step height, I'm gonna say 20. So compile, save. So now, if I hit jump, you should see a ball come up off my feet a little bit. Yeah. And then if I was to be that close to a surface, it would let me jump off of it. Why is it not do- oh, because we have nothing plugged in. So, our next thing, so on faults, we want to do n. Do not put a s space in for do n, otherwise you're going to be searching for it for bloody ever, believe me. If you put do n, no spaces, and then we want to do this for two times. On our counter, we are going to do a switch. And this really, really irks me. Whereas everything else with an integer like this is going to start at zero. Do n starts at one. Yeah. Stupid, ain't it? So, when we do n on one, we want to jump. Okay, on two, we want to launch, launch character, there we go, and then we're going to plug that into jumping. Our velocity, we are going to get uh, actually, no, we don't want... Yes, we do want to get actor up vector. And we are going to get character movement and get jump velocity. Get jump Z velocity right there. And we're going to multiply our up vector by our jump Z velocity and plug that into launch velocity and set Z override to true. That should allow us to do a double jump. We need to be able to reset this counter though. We want land. Event on landed. We will Reset the double jump. Okay. We're just going to move this out of the way a bit, and we are eh, actually right around where I had it was good, but I want it snapped to a dark line. There we go. C, jump, and double jump. There we go. Compile and save. And then we want otherwise to get this hit result and we're gonna break break hit result. We are going to get the normal. We're going to do a plus vector. One. We're then going to normalize this. Okay, and what this is doing is when we hit a wall with our sphere around our feet, we're gonna get the direction away from that wall. So the impact the um normal of it, the normal of the wall, and we are going to give it a up vector. 
We're then going to normalize that so that none of these are over the one value. And then we're going to launch our character. Except for instead of using get actor up vector, we're going to plug in our normalized vector. And we're going to hit that little thing so it drops that down and we're just going to start straightening some things off here to make this look a bit more pretty. And the last thing we've got to remember there is set our jump to true. And then we're going to grab this bit, comment with C, and call this wall jump. So this should push us up and away from the wall that we're jumping into. So if we compile, save, we should be able to, oh, gonna maximize this here. Should be able to jump and then jump again. Yeah, so jump, jump, but no third time until we hit the ground, jump. Ooh. Okay, I didn't screw that up, good. I thought I may have um, <laughs> landed outside of these. So we're just gonna quickly grab our spline tracks. And I'm going to take that end spline track, hit R to scale, and give it a good distance so that I can't jump outside of it. And then same thing with the um, other ones. I want to scale that up and move that up just so I can't jump over it without switching tracks and I should probably do the same thing at the end points oh. spline start point there we go I'm gonna scale that up So now if I jump through these, I should still be fine. And we're going to set up our wall jumping with some box geometry. So we want to move that along our spline, R to scale. And then move it up so it'll be a little bit taller than our character. Actually, I'm going to give this one a bit more height so we can see if we can actually jump on it and then control C control V something like that I think should be good again I want to maximize so if I come around here ooh, ooh, oh it's just gonna let me go through it but it's gonna be a little little bit of a pain so I'm just gonna move those up a bit there we go so now i should be able to move under them without much issue run around be able to jump jump but if i jump into here come on what are you come on you little bastard because my camera is not following him. So I guess we are going to set the camera to do stuff too now. So what we are going to do is on our camera where we have it following our actor, we are going to, from the closest location on spline, we are going to get, uh, or no, we are going to break vector. We are then going to on our get actor location, break vector. 
we are then going to make vector and we're going to plug x and y into it and plug z into that and then we're going to plug that in there compile and save so this should now mean our camera doesn't move with our character why not Why is our camera staying still? Why is our camera not going up? So get actor location up. Yeah. Hmm. Just going to do a print string on here of that Z value. So Z value should be changing. This is our player camera, yeah. Spline track is valid because I'm not walking into the spline track yet. And then as soon as I walk into the spline track, everything's fine. Okay, what are you doing? Oh, because I'm an idiot. So we're gonna go back to our character. Um, normal, the object that was swept, plus one. Yep, yeah, that actually should be correct. No, I thought I had that in. We want to override X and Y as well. Nope, that's not actually the problem, okay. So here is the problem. We are constrained to the spline. Our location is still being set by the spline. So what we want to do then is... Um, on our event graph... Set actor location. We need to do a branch. Branch. And the condition will be jumping. So if we are jumping, we are going to, instead of using this here, we are going to do enter spline first. Because then we're resetting our distance along the spline. And we'll get our cam player camera. We'll get spline track. And that will go in camera track. And we'll get spline track from here. And that will go in spline track. So, if we are jumping, we are going to run the enter spline because enter spline resets our location on the spline, or resets our spline distance. But if we're not, we're gonna do as per normal. Let's see if that will work for us. No. So, what we're going to do then is something completely different that's kind of the same. So, we are either going to get location at distance along spline, or we are going to get or. Er, Find closest world location. Okay. And we are going to switch 
between these. Oh, I don't want roll, I want find closest to do find location closest to world location. Yeah. In world space. Our world location will be get after location. This is why I did the other type of system before. So um, this is like the third time I've started recording this series of videos because I've kept doing it different ways because there's so many different ways to do anything in programming. Um, yeah. So this here, what's going to make this easiest? We're going to break these links. We are going to recombine that pin. And on jump, we are going to do a select. And on jumping is true, we are going to select world location. And on jumping is false, we're going to select spline. And then we're going to split that out and plug those in how we had it before. Okay, but now we need when jumping is false. So... Get jumping... Branch... Is false. Do once... Enter spline. We're going to do the same thing we had happening before. We've just moved it about a bit. So spline track in there. And then camera player. Get spline track. So this will update our location when the um, jumping is no longer true. But when it is true, we want to do a sequence where we do whatever else and then we reset to do once. Those will plug in here. This will plug in here. Compile and save. Let's see if... Okay. Runtime error access none. Trying to get spline track. Get distance on spline track. Oh, because I'm running that before the is valid. So where's my um, event graph? I need to, of course, run this after is valid. And then have these go out to set actor location. Compile and save. The other thing we're going to do is um, we're going to... Move this up a little bit. I'm gonna move this back a little bit. We are going to make both of them thinner. Ooh, that's really thin, but I guess that's what we're gonna be dealing with. Um, and then on our character, we want to make them jump higher because they are a. They are a platformer character after all, so we're going to select the character movement and we're going to do jump. And we want jump Z velocity from 420 to 700. Sure. Random values, yay. And that's better. And now if we jump here. Yep, we can jump back and forth along the wall. And then. Why is he running off the spline track? Anywho, if I move back here, I am now back on the spline tracks and... Nope. Okay, what are you doing, you little thing?
Okay, why all of a sudden are you broken? So we're either getting the closest location to world if we're jumping, or if we're not jumping, we're going back to doing what we were previously. If jumping is false, we do want reset. Oh, we need another sequence stone. Sequence. If jumping is false, do once and then set actor location. We're going to clean that up in a moment if this works. It should, so. First round around the track works as intended. Then we're going to. Come on. Jump, jump, jump. I don't know why he's moving through the... Oh, he's moving through the walls because we are setting actor location without sweeping. We need to sweep. There we go. And then he's back on his track, and then we should be able to jump. No, because that... Oh. The problem is, we still have full control when we are in the air. That is the problem. So we don't want full control when we're in the air. When we are in the air or when we're jumping. So jumping or um, is falling. We get or Hell, we could even just have that on is falling. Because when he's jumping, he is in the falling state as well. Um, this we would want on jumping. Yeah, when jumping stops, reset that. Hmm, <laughs> And I said this was going to be a shorter one. There we go, so... What we want to do is then, if we're running that on falling, we also want to run our other one on falling. And that should there we go so we've got wall jump when we're in the air we've got okay so to actually show off our wall jump we're gonna move these a little bit further apart I'm gonna make them thicker again Just so we can see what's happening. And move it further apart. And then, for the character here, mesh. Um, it's a pawn mesh, yeah. So I think on my this, um, wall jump radius, I'm gonna set that to like 60. We'll soon find out. How does that look? 60, yep. Looks pretty good around the character, so we'll come over here and we're going to do jump into the wall, jump back against the other wall, and there we go. And that is working how I want it. Um, him spinning in the air, not so much. We're going to address that 
but we'll address that in the next video. So what I'm gonna do right now is clean this all up. So jumping here, we don't care about. We care about falling. So we're gonna move our is valid back over here. We are going to put our character thing there. We're going to move our find closest location over here. Straighten. We'll straighten that there. We'll move this back like that. I'm going to want to expand this box to contain everything. Grab these, hit Q to straighten them out. And we're just cleaning up this spaghetti mess of jumping that we've made. Okay. Actually, hey, we may just want to move that down there and move that like that, because then we may have space to put all of this. We want to straighten connection to all pins, which is going to make a massive jumble right there. That was probably a bad idea. So we're going to bring this one in here, straighten that branch, and then we are going to move those about, straighten connection. Okay. This is our do once, which gets triggered off here. Straighten that. This here, we're gonna do a reroute node that we can plug that into. And we're going to take all of this and move it down like that and then we're going to take this hit Q to straighten a couple of the things there and move it in like that Okay, something like that. So, if spline is valid, set location and rotation of character following spline. If character is falling, follow spline less strictly. On landing, return to strict movement. Sure. All right, and we need our is falling down here, so we're going to move our spline track down. Get that in there. Something like that. Okay. And then we're going to move that down. So our next video, we're going to mess with this more. <laughs> so in the next video, we are going to do an interpolation here to smooth our movement and our rotation. And then we are also going to have the mesh, so the actual character body, rotate to the direction of movement. Okay. So, again, I'll let you all know, um, not that I'm begging for anything, but just in case you're wanting the project files or access to that priority Discord, there are those benefits for signing up for the Patreon at patreon.com slash toadnet link is in the description as well as our discord and um there's something else there is it twitter maybe but yeah 
primary is definitely Discord and Patreon. Um, but yeah, if you're wanting access to the priority Discord channels, and if you are wanting access to the um, project files, at starting at $1 a month, you get the project files. Starting at $5 a month, you get the project files and access to the priority Discord. So we'll see you next time. Thank you to my couple supporters out there. And um, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Please let me know what your thoughts are. If you're running into any problems, let me know on the Discord so I can help you through it. And um, always let me know what you want to see next. So bye for now.